I've been watching a lot of videos about people editing with Vim and Helix and a little bit about Emacs, and I'm familiar uh, with them from a past life when I did uh, some development in control in a terminal, but I don't use those tools anymore. I use VS Code a lot. And the reason I use VS Code is just because, um, you know, if I come across a new language, I want to install a extension to handle it. 99.999% of the time it's zero configuration. And then I'm off to the races and I'm productive. Um, there's a lot of reasons to use editors like Vim. The motions are incredibly fast. Once you get used to how you do editing in, in these tools, um, as the prime agent says, it's like you're flying like Harry Potter and they're absolutely right. But for me, I've just found that, um, what is it? Eff eff efficacy, efficiency is better than efficiency. I don't know how to say that word because I never use it in my daily life, but in any case, we're just going to dive in and I'm going to show you real quick um tutorial of you know some of the vs code motions that i use every day and i feel like don't get a lot of space in this conversation um and for a lot of you none of this stuff's going to be new but for people who are maybe just getting started or never really looked into it maybe you'll learn something maybe you won't if you know of any other good productivity tips when it comes to specifically editing text in vs code please share them in the comments because i would love to know more and I know that I am just probably barely above beginner level. So we've got a couple examples here and we're just gonna go ahead and, and go through it. So first of all, um, I am a big mouse user. So that's gonna be a big difference between me and someone who is maybe using a text editor, but we're just gonna go ahead and get right in. Um, First of all, let's go ahead and create a person class. We're doing this in Dart, all right? So let's go ahead and create a person class. And we're gonna give it a title field. Now we're gonna, we've invoked a LSP menu and we're gonna go ahead and create constructor. It's in the wrong place. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this up, format. And then we're gonna go ahead and copy this. And there's two ways to do this. Obviously you can control C, control V, or you can go ahead and move it down with a copy. So just so you guys can see that again, option shift down. Um, so we're gonna option shift down and then we're gonna come over and then we're gonna grab this. I grabbed that with option shift left, command D. And then we're gonna go ahead and rename this to place. So again, from up here, that would be, ah, when I'm doing this on stream, it's hard for me to think. Um, let's see here. Okay, then we're gonna come in here and we're gonna rename title. So there's two ways to do this. You can do it like I just did where you select it like that, or you can do the old double clip. And I use Command D probably more than any other feature in VS Code. I rarely use the find and replace menu or regex searches. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go dot, 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 name, and we're gonna get on with our life. Okay, so that's the first part. Now we're gonna stage this. So how would I do that? Stage all changes, it's stage, okay. So now we're going to go ahead and do give these index give these index numbers a start at one, kind of like uh, the section below here. So um, this is like kind of a rare case, but I actually use this um, extension more than I like to admit. So we're just going to go ahead and create multiple cursors. I did that with um, Command Option down 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 down. We'll do insert numbers. We're going to grab those place, space, and now you'll see it looks weird, but here's the thing, you get used to these patterns, and now we're in, done. So there's a lot of ways to do that. With five, it doesn't make sense, but if you're trying to do like 150, which actually happens more often than you'd think, um, then it's a nice feature. So here's another place where uh, I feel like the VS Code way of manipulating lines is like way better than anything else. And again, I know there's thousands of ways to do this stuff and I'm sure someone will tell me exactly why I'm wrong uh, in other editors, but let's just give this an example. So first of all, um, Vim users know you can delete a line. You can do this in VS Code just by doing, uh, yank. that's basically a yank, yank and delete. Uh, you just go ahead and hit the cut. And for me, it's command X that cuts the line. And then if you wanna move stuff around, you hold down option and just go up. So we've like resorted things in like, it, it's brainless, right? You don't even have to really think about it. Um, I'm gonna back that out and show you one other cool feature. So we're gonna delete this 
And then we're gonna just go ahead and select these lines. And then we're gonna do sort lines ascending. And that's another way of doing it. So that's another nice VS code. Um, and what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna take a quick break to show you the Git pane to show you how we can stage individual changes because I kind of have it here in my notes here. So let's go into changes, click that. Um, now, one thing I will say is that the split pane sideways on VS Code takes up a lot of space, but you can actually configure it to be um, vertically split. Um, so yeah, it's normally horizontally split. You can configure it to be horizontal, to be vertically split, split if you want. But let's go in here and you know, let's just say we're gonna stage these changes. So you can do it two ways. You can do the, you can do the old right click. There's a, there's a keyboard shortcut for it too, but command palette is your friend here. So I do stage selected ranges. And now I can stage those individually. And we'll go ahead and stage these as well. And you can also repeat your last command by opening Command Palette, Command Shift P, repeat last command. So now those are staged. Um, and we're gonna go back and continue. Um, so now this is kind of an interesting thing I ran into the other day. What we're gonna do is we're gonna open uh, this example.csv file. Now VS Code doesn't have fuzzy finding by default. Um, but between search by name and the Explorer, you can actually get quite a bit done. The Explorer is nice in giving you just an overall view. This is something I feel like is lacking a lot in CLI tools. And again, I know there's stuff like Nerd Tree and all these other things to do it, but there's this context break, in my opinion, between those tools and VS Code tools um, that I'm still trying to grapple with as I, as I try to onboard into these CLI tools, just to try to figure out what, what we're dealing with. Um, but in any case, let's go ahead and go back to this. So we're gonna search open example at CSV. And what we wanna do is we wanna create a Dart data class that respects uh, essentially this header um, with the subsequent items. And we're just gonna treat them all as strings for now. So this is kind of a fun example. So we're gonna go ahead and yank that. We're going to paste it in. We're gonna grab this. Now we are gonna go ahead and let's see here. With this one here, I'm going to just do it manually. And then I want these in camel case. So what I'll do is I'll grab these. And this is where things like Vim start to really um, shine. But we'll just keep going. We got a camel case. Uh, we're actually gonna have to change this name because final is a keyword. So we'll do final grade. Uh, wait, no, what is that? Final. Okay, so that's year grade. So final grade and year grade. Great. So I'll get back to it. And then what we're gonna do here is do final string. Da -da, and then I'm gonna do class table row. Pull this down. And we'll come in here and we will say, um, actually, let's go ahead and instantiate this. We'll do final list string row. And then we're gonna come in here and we're gonna do, we're gonna do late final string equals row, insert numbers. And we'll come in here and we'll say create Instructor for final field, and they always put the bottom wrong spot, so we'll pull it up. And there, we've gone ahead and created our table row. And um, again, this is one of these things where it, when you're doing like eight of them, sometimes it breaks even to do it by hand. But I was dealing with a row the other day that was had 150 columns, um, and being able to do this pattern in a pretty straightforward way was like totally game changing. The other thing that's really interesting about these key bindings on VS Code is they they don't, it's not like a whole different paradigm. It's literally everything you know about normal text editing in like your operating system, just regular operating system. But then it adds a couple layers. So it doesn't take anything away. It just adds on top of that, which I think is really good um, for people whose work is going between uh, VS Code and Figma and Coda or Notion or Google Docs and Twitter and email and all these things. Um, you don't have this like one unique place where text acts differently, 
which I think there's a huge benefit to that. Um, but in any case, I just wanted to show you a couple things. Hope this was helpful. And if you have any productivity tips, leave them below. Um, and if you are a NeoVim user, let me know your favorite plugins because I am skilling up in NeoVim just to try to understand the things that I'm missing. Um, but I did think it was important for me to just make a real quick video about, you know, just some, com some common patterns that uh, can be helpful in VS Code when you're just doing general work. So thank you very much. Appreciate your time.